recreational marijuana is set to become legalized in Canada this July, which leaves employers with a slew of questions regarding health and safety in the workplace. Dan Demers, Senior Manager of Strategic Business Development at Can-Am, explains how to maneuver this unfamiliar landscape as the law changes. The employers that are responsible for the most dangerous occupations, those are the ones that are really, really concerned, especially considering that there's not a lot of guidance or controls that have been made available to help, uh, help them in their next actions. Policies in the workplace should focus on being fit for duty. And what that means for most employers is that you have to show up being able to do your job safely. So that way that you can get home safe, the person next to you does, and that you're not affecting the public in a negative way. So employers should be looking at what health and safety programs do I have that demand that everybody shows up fit for duty and what controls do I have in place to ensure that everybody adheres to those very necessary standards. Employers need to ensure they implement proper controls and policies that recognize marijuana impairment differs from alcohol impairment. Marijuana is very, very different than alcohol. The way that it works is very different. The way that it lingers is very different. If you remember nothing else related to this, it's like comparing an apple to a hubcap. It's just such a different substance. When those that are mindful of health and safety and fitness for duty think about impairment, they're really thinking about neurocognitive impairment. The controls that employers have or the protections that they have is to put in place a standard that essentially precludes any use of cannabis, whether it's on your own time or during work hours when you're doing something dangerous. Those effects are largely not fully understood and they change depending on how it's ingested, the concentration of the product, and for an employer that must keep the workplace safe, I'm talking uh, your pilots, your aircraft engineers, uh, planes, trains, and automobiles, I mean, these folks need to be ready to do their job and able to respond to an emergency and the lingering neurocognitive effects of cannabis, which would impact a person's ability to recall information, to react to an emergency, to avoid tunnel vision, to avoid uh, any issues with orienting themselves in three-dimensional space, all of that stuff is affected by cannabis far after the high subsides. Policies need to be more than just a drug test. A drug test is just a tool. Uh, and even when somebody comes forward and says, I've got an addiction, or they fail a drug test for under a normal program, the next step is not typically termination. What we want to do is just remove that risk, but keep that person. Let's try to focus on the employee, which is keeping them safe, uh, keeping them accommodated, and uh, work together on this. For more health and safety videos, visit cos-mag.com. You can also subscribe to our new YouTube channel that features videos exclusively for safety professionals. New videos are added every week. For Canadian Occupational Safety, I'm Amanda Siliker.